Welcome to the tip channel. That is perfection. Today we're going to take a look at installing a Flexstone shower. Now Flexstone is actually manufactured by Centrell and the Flexstone product is sold at the Home Depot store. First thing naturally is to gut the old shower. Now I tear everything down to the bare stud and get rid of any possibility of any molds or anything like that. Now it's very imperative that everything be just as level as possible. Um, the floor needs to be level. If it is out of level, there is a product that is called Floor Leveler that actually mixes up and pours out of a bucket and finds level. The next thing that you're going to want to do is to check all the walls for level and make any adjustments in them that you need to. You're going to need to. Next, you want to make sure that there's plenty of studs in the location of where the door will be attaching for the shower. And you're also going to want to add some blockers, some blockers for perhaps some handrails, some blockers for your shower. You want to make sure that everything is into place. Take pictures of those so you know exactly where those are. You'll, when Next up, after you get all of your studding and blocking into place, is naturally to cover the walls. Now, the Flexstone product is only going to go up about 80 inches, so you will need to do some moisture-resistant drywall above that. Now, I see so many people using plywood as a backer uh, for these type of showers. Uh, I use Hardy Backer, so exactly the same product that I would use if it were a ceramic shower. Hardy Backer, if any water gets behind the product we're putting up, the Hardy Backer is totally waterproof. Now, to even take it further, I use a product called Red Guard on all of the seams and corners, which makes everything totally weather tight. Now you'll notice that down at the bottom, I've left, last, left the last little piece of Hardy Backer out so that I will be able to get my shower pan into place. Anything that gets behind our product is going to find its way down into the shower pan. I have reconstructed this floor. It was out of level. We added a piece of Advantech down there. So then I go ahead and paint the ceiling and walls out. I want to get all that mess over with before I actually set my shower pan. Next we'll set the shower pan and then we'll get started on the walls. Now we're getting ready to cut our Centrell or Flexstone product. Uh, what do you use to cut this? You can use just about anything. You can use a sharp utility knife. You can use a power planer. You can use a belt saw. Belt saw. You can use a belt sander. You could use a jigsaw. My preferred method whenever I'm doing long cuts is to use a Craig AccuCut. Now, what this is is a track saw, relatively inexpensive, about 100 bucks. And basically, it has a material on the back side of it, which is like an anti-skid. So when you lay it down on product, it doesn't move around. It has what's called a sacrificial edge and your saw blades right up against that so you just line up your sacrificial edge on your pencil marks and naturally take your saw you've got a sled which attaches to your saw put that on the craig accu cut and make your cut next up we want to glue up our wall now your adhesive will come with the flexstone product what you're looking for is that you want to do about the size of a quarter and about a quarter inch deep, about every five to six inches square. This will get a good adhesion. The next step naturally is to stick the product into place. Now at this point, you're supposed to continue on with the sidewalls. I personally like to let things set overnight, so I've done three supports going from wall to wall and tuck shims in behind just to keep it nice and tight. I'll let this set overnight. At this point, we've just stuck our two sidewalls. Now, 
they're saying just stick it and forget it. Um, I come from a generation where we did more light in bathrooms with very uneven plaster walls and what have you. So I'm not a fan of just sticking it and forgetting it. So what we're going to do next is we're going to add some supports in here. Um, excuse me. They go by a lot of different um, names, uh, third hands, things like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a two before down inside and use these devices in between to hold pressure against this until the glue sets up. We'll leave that set overnight and then we'll come back, take them down and caulk the corners in. Uh, now I've taken the time to scribe the corners uh, with the compass and we got those with a very nice fit. Still run a bead of caulking down there. The good thing is we used Red Guard in behind of this. With the Red Guard product, you really end, end up with a very watertight product. So the caulking is going to be more um, aesthetics, if you will. Now, I'm not a fan of wide caulking joints, and that's why I took the time to scribe to the back wall. But uh, we're going to get our supports in here, and then we'll start working on some trim. And this is what I was referring to. So we have two befores down each side, and we got the third hands into place. That'll keep everything nice and tight against the wall uh, until the glue sets up, and we'll remove those later. Uh, now, you don't have to invest into these. Back in the old days, naturally, we couldn't afford stuff like this. So we used a ton of furring strips, because you could always use furring strips. Everybody was doing paneling back then, so you definitely can use up a furring strip. But uh, that having been said, what we did was do furring strips. We'd cut our furring strip just about a quarter inch too long. We'd bow them in the middle and then naturally let them spring against the two two befores on the outside. So that's another way of, of creating that if you'd like. Or you can follow instructions and lick it and stick it. All right, we have all of our trims into place. Now, if you purchase your product from Home Depot, the Flexstone, uh, the miners will already be cut, but your product will be long, so you will need to cut the square ends off. But you don't have to figure out how to do a miter. Um, so anyways, all of our uh, trim is into place. I've got that um, taped into place with painter's tape. Uh, yes, I am that freaky guy that is perfection. Everything needs to be just as perfect as possible. Is it a perfect world? No. Uh, you have imperfect walls and perfect floors. You trim and fit and do the very best that you possibly can. And that's what we've done here. I think it's turned out extremely well uh, in a 100-year-old house. Now, the faucet that my client chose to use for the shower, it has a waterfall to it. It has eight jets. It has a wand to it and a tow washer. Okay, well, I guess maybe it could be a tub filler, but I would say it will be used for feet. Anyways, digital route readout. How easy is this unit to install? There are two brackets to go on the wall. You drill a hole for the supply lines to go into, and you hang the unit. And don't get no sampler. If the unit ever goes bad, you just take it off of the hooks, Hook another one on, hook the two supply lines up, and you're back in business. Okay, next morning, all supports have been removed, tape's been removed, and now we're ready to caulk in the corners. Now, I've taken the time to scrap my corners in, so I only have about a sixteenth of an inch gap. And with the red guard in behind, naturally, we're not waterproofing anything. All we're doing now is aesthetics. Now, a little tip with the... Uh, caulking mineral spirits mineral spirits to clean it up it naturally will be a silicone base those of you who purchased your kit from home depot it will come with your kit we'll go ahead and do our caulking and that'll complete our install of the shower so how did the project turn out this is the tip channel that is perfection what it's not cocky when you back it up I hope you found this informative. If you did, please like and subscribe and have a great day.